Welcome. Hey, this is the Microsoft Community Office Hours. And joining us this morning, so you've got your regulars, myself, Christian Buckley, Sean McDonough, rocking the headphones and the orange T-shirt. We should start uh, off not first. Not quite orange. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Red. Yeah, there you go. That's classic. Nice. And Mr. Eric Riz. Hello. Hello, Mr. Buckley, Mr. McDonough. Nice to see you gentlemen here this morning. How are you? Doing well, um, and it, for everybody that's that's watching, so we are live streaming across multiple locations, LinkedIn Live, Facebook, as well as Periscope via Twitter. Um, so feel free to be monitoring different areas uh, if you have any questions you'd like us to attempt to tackle. I do have some questions queued up. Sean, Eric, do you have anything that's like burning questions from the community that you want to I discuss in this hour? Again. No. Total slacker. I was busy enjoying Father's Day and my birthday last week. So that is nice. Well, and we're we are still recovering two weeks now from um, uh, National Donut Day. So, uh, yeah, which can't forget know, that. In this household, I can guarantee you, I think we're all putting on excess donut poundage right now. Well, it's such a it, it is a religious holiday, and therefore uh, it's a special time of year. We have gone out and purchased donuts two other times since then, so we just uh, we have to you have to taper down. Okay, you can't ramp up to that and then just stop. So true, and you can't just go cold turkey. No, 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 because no. I think that's dangerous. I think it's yeah. medically dangerous to go cold turkey on donuts. Agreed. And I'm sure there's some medical data out there that would agree or disagree. Absolutely. Yeah. You're referring <laughs> without a doubt. Without a doubt. Referring, of course, to the empirical research. Yes, of course. I thought so. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So, well, we do have. Uh, so I've got a couple questions that have come in that I thought were interesting. Um, it, it's it's funny you see like the themes. I've seen a couple qu questions posted out. Uh, on the in the Facebook communities around Office 365 and and Teams, the traditional stuff like how do I back things up? You know the same questions that come over and over again. Um, you know when when is Teams going to have all these cool features that Zoom has? That's a very common question that you see again and again. Here's a Teams question, um, and, and so I'd love to get your guys' thoughts around this. Um, so this comes from Dirk. Uh, he asked this on the 19th uh, in the Teams group uh, that's out in as part of the Collab365 community out on Facebook. Uh, and I think there's like 20,000, maybe even like 40,000 members of that community. It's pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Uh, but he says, uh, maybe here there's someone here who can help me. I have some problems with the video and sound quality in Microsoft Teams. Amazing. All right. Uh, so he says, uh, I've my, heard that. I, I don't know how to answer I, that. That's, that's I, a tough yeah. one. Well, so here it is. So I'd like to get your, your thoughts on this. So it says his firm has a fast network, they're in infrastructure, uh, secured the firewall, the standard stuff. When someone behind the firewall connects to a person outside the firewall, so the home office, the quality is fine. I can see a connection directly from the home office to the firewall IP. If that call joins a third person, the quality problem starts. The video rate drops as I see jitter and lag. Sometimes the sound quality is rather bad. And what I can see, the direct connection is closed and all connections are to servers from Microsoft, UDP. If I bypass the firewall, the connections are better. So there must be a firewall problem. I tried to switch off the intrusion detection system. Nothing happens, bad quality. I open the known ports like Microsoft described, the same bad quality. Switch off the web filter, nothing, just bad quality. And then says, does anyone have a hint for me how I configure my firewall? Um, well, depends on the firewall, because I mean, I have, I've had experience with this before. Um, layer seven inspections will definitely impact uh, anything that's doing uh, intrusion detection and uh, live packet inspection will affect things. Other than that, um, if you've got any QoS features, quality of service features on your firewall, you may try and enable those for Teams related traffic. Um, if the firewall is smart enough, I mean, it really comes down to the firewall in a lot of cases. Um, we would have to know what you're working with to 
give better advice than just that, I would think. You know, I, I know that uh, that's feedback that I hear from a lot of people. Uh, you know, I think there needs to be more discussion around that. I, I have no idea what Microsoft is working on to Im improve this, but I mean, it's it's a fairly common complaint that I hear from from people. Yeah, anything that involves media streaming and whatnot. Um, if your firewall has the ability to boost packet priority through quality of service rules um, and give priority to that traffic, that is going to help it. Um, is the firewall old? Eric was talking about. He's taking ownership for dinging sounds. I'm, oh. yeah, I'm exactly. See, Christian and I have a language. It's, right. it's all based around ice cream and, and dairy products, but he understands exactly. In, base, in basements, yes. Exactly. In basements. <laughs> yeah, but if you've got any additional uh, input regarding um, what firewall you're running, um, what you've got, you know, look at the age of the product. Uh, older firewalls, especially, uh, don't implement some of the common protocols and standards that uh, Microsoft will use in terms of both um, filtering and you know compression algorithms, whatnot, what it'll allow through, uh, how fast it'll process the data, general rules like that. I mean, Microsoft tries to remain fairly neutral on these kinds of products, but you know, you still see occasionally you have guidance of uh, not to say authorized solutions, but those that have been configured specifically to work with Microsoft networks. I don't know if that's the case for firewall products. There are recommended Microsoft uh, recommended firewall products, but I have not seen any um, any uh, article specific to that. Uh, the other thing that'll truly kill it, and this is true for all Office 365, Microsoft 365 traffic, if you have an authenticating firewall, because that authentication uh, adds another third step potentially in a handshake in that uh, in the packets going out, and Microsoft recommends that you whitelist any destinations particularly on Microsoft's uh, network, their IPs, host names, and just do not run authentication on traffic going to those sources. Um, there are a bunch of other just general rules, but you know that, those are probably the big ones. Well, it's interesting. I got another question here that's uh, getting more into this uh, uh, train of thought around uh, Azure um, AD Connect, Azure AD. Um, let me see. Chris asks, uh, not sure if this is the right group for this question. Here goes. This was in the Office 365 group. I have a customer that wants to enable the following. When a user logs into their domain join device using their domain credentials, they shouldn't be prompted for credentials when opening an Office 365 application. Uh, the they have uh, AD Connect syncing with Azure AD using pass the the hash authentication. However, they don't have SSO selected. When, while will selecting the SSO checkbox give them the desired result, or is something else needed? Um, I think it's certainly a first. Well, you know, I'm talking a lot here. Riz, you got any thoughts? I think you're absolutely right, Sean. Please continue. <laughs> 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 that was way too easy. Um, well, on the let's go back to the first question since I, I wasn't afforded the opportunity to jump into that one. Um, you, you have to just take the reins, Eric. There's no. I, come on. You guys know I, I'm so shy and timid. This is uh, all new to me. <laughs> right. Gentle flower. That's right. I've noticed some very Gentle very odd flower. <laughs> Sorry. I, I've noticed some very odd things happening. Uh, with some clients and, and my own environments uh, with teams and it affects sound completely off the conversation of, of firewalls and, and packets and things. Uh, for whatever reason, as soon as Teams comes on my machine, uh, my fan heats up right away and it starts chugging away. So that's a problem. And I've noticed that 
the the fan seems to throttle with the amount of people that are on the call. So here, there's there's three of us, and it's chugging away. You can probably hear it because I'm. You got an old machine. Sorry. You have an old machine. Yeah, it's it's a DX266, but it's really you know I I can't turn it off (laughs) for so long. That's right. Have you decided, have you looked at Task Manager while that's happening, and see yeah, how much so of uh, I have using so IRC? the the biggest uh, contributor to the fan speed and, and issues is of course OneDrive and uh, Adobe Cloud as well seems to suck up all your RAM and as soon as you have Teams on, it, everything starts to get affected. Well, I I believe it's the case. Don't quote me, but if you have uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, Teams, OneDrive, and Chrome browser open, your system could explode. I'm yeah, pretty sure. Fires have been. Yeah. And and you wonder why I haven't been on these for, for a number of weeks. <laughs> well, it's basically because my last laptop oh, went. Wait, wait, okay. is this is this better, Eric? Eric, I'm so sorry you're experiencing this. You know, if, if I could be there for you and yeah, and have that and that the little fur mitten and rub your back, which I, I we would need do the, that. We need the gentle music track running in the background right now. Too. <laughs> give him, give, give Buckley eight seconds and you'll have it. Um, yeah, I, I awesome. suspect you're right, Eric. Um, so uh, this is a laptop, right? This is a laptop. Okay. So, you have any compressed air? That's a very personal question, Sean. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's a different that's that's a clinical discussion. That's right. Uh, I do <laughs> I do have some compressed air. Of course, you know that I, I'm I'm cycling a lot these days since I'm stuck in the house. So but the whole combustion conversation is, is really quite personal to me. <laughs> well Can't catch him after lunch and then you'll get compressed air. Oh, Liam, by the way, waves hello, and uh, he says, now I know why I have 128 gigabytes of RAM. So, yeah. <laughs> another uh, way to solve that. Flashing that, huh? Yeah, he got a nice new system recently. But I was going to say, with the compressed air, um, particularly if you've had the laptop a long time, blowing the fans out um, because the efficiency drops quite a bit, and you get dust in those, uh, particularly around the CPU components, and so you get less exchange of the heat. So well, there, there was a question I want to go back to about 25 minutes ago, which was something about the, the whole, you know, sound quality issues. Yeah. And I, I, there's so many things. Exactly. Turn up your hearing aid. The hearing is on the inside of the ear. You just, <laughs> yeah. so, as I was saying at some point, anyway, check. You, you can check the individual systems, too, to try to alleviate some of the, the stress on the machines, because I'm living proof to the fact that just because you see teams and it seems to operate correctly doesn't mean it's actually happy and there's a lot going on behind the scenes of, of your laptops i've noticed that strange things too we've talked about in the past that the the days of plug and play are long gone um where i have the same configuration i've got my standard mic i've got my primary i've got multiple webcams but I have my primary i go into most teams meetings or any other web meetings and my you know, the conditions have not changed and occasionally I'll log in and it will have switched my camera or it will have switched the default mic. It's like, you know, system was not turned off. I touched nothing. And yet logging into multiple meetings and, and you know, things happens. And I'm sure I, I accidentally I bumped my mouse or I breathed inconsistently and Cortana picked up on it and changed something. Uh, who knows? I, I told you before, you need to stop breathing. It's really it does. It does really inhibit. your. I, body. I'm going to write that down this time. Thank you. Yeah. Occasionally, it you stuff. know devices will fall off the USB bus, and when they reconnect, you know you you will think that it's been there consistently. But if it's fallen off and it's in active use or it's being referred to as a default device for something, that'll right. change the setting. My computer has fallen off the bus. What? The short bus. Yeah. The short okay. bus. Yeah. Buckley, do you, have you do you have a lot of uh, of tenants that you're running for Teams? Um, I have, uh, yeah, there's like a, well, I, I'm not in, well, so yes, I'm a member of about a dozen different it's guests. It's really now. a yes or no question. I, I have one. I, I, yeah. So I'm a, so like open at the same time. Is that what you're asking? It takes a very simple I'm question. I'm a member of a lot of different tenants. So I, I have two main goals here. I just want to be completely transparent with everyone. One, I do want 
Sean to to emit coffee through various orifices. So <laughs> I'm gonna it might really, happen. We've still got 45 minutes left. I think we got pretty close on that one, but it wasn't. That's, yeah, it was. Close. That's a running goal for all of us. Yes, Eric. Thank you. Uh, there again, there, there was a point that I was going to make. Um, it was quite factual in content, and uh, here it comes. So sit down. Uh, <laughs> When you switch tenants, uh, I've seen a, a lot of change to default settings between tenants. Okay. So th though it looks like the same thing to you when you're just going, you know, click, there's my little head, click from here, go to there. Okay, now I'm in the XYZ tenant. All your configuration could have changed. Okay. So if you are jumping around a lot during the day, as a lot of people are with multiple clients and multiple things that are going on, ooh, that sounds crying now. Um, double check, double check your settings, especially before you start a call or something that's serious in nature. Because I've seen a lot of, of things reset or fall off when you're changing things around. That's helpful. I have to watch that. I, and I was so I am uh, uh, like a lot leper, of people. Christian. I'm sorry. You're a digital leper. Yes. Well, that that is true. Well, um, I would like I'd like the record to show that I was helpful. One. Okay. Good. Oh, so uh, what I I do try to minimize some of that uh, you know toggling back and forth between the uh, the team's desktop application. So I use Rambox, and I have uh, you know three primary tenants that I am logged into as tabs in Rambox. Um, and for those that aren't familiar with the Rambox, uh, it's a free tool that's out there. That I don't know what the paid version does or doesn't do, um, but. I'm a link. But it, uh, yeah. It, do you want to go find that while I'm chatting it up? I, I will do that. Thank you. That is a to do. Um, but it's uh, so I use Rambox because it uh, it, it sucks up less uh, uh, processing than uh, than does like uh, having Chrome tabs open. Um, the other nice thing uh, uh, about that is uh, is I can have multiple different services that are open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so I, so I actually have, uh, cross my Ram box, right? I'm going to show you this, uh, doo, 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 doo. let me show it right here for those that are watching the live. So I actually have Gmail, my WhatsApp family. So I've got multiple teams, tenants, messenger. Um, so it's really nice to have all of those, those tabs. I have that, that open, it does the notifications across all of those different messaging services all in one place. So I, I can, I don't have to have, you know, multiple browser windows open. I have that one application that I can open and close and it's logged in all those locations. And I get the notifications across the top of them when somebody comes to me. Cause it's, you know, for, for me, I know a lot of people have this problem where I'll he hear the bell go off some notification somewhere and then you find yourself digging to find where is that notification coming from, which <laughs> service. It never happens to me. And I know. What's painful are those people, too, and I know we all have those people that we collaborate with. You're having a conversation in a chat in Teams, and a few minutes go by, and suddenly you'll get same thread of discussion via Facebook Messenger. And you're like, what are you doing? You know, and they they moved over for some reason, checked Facebook, uh, opened up a chat and just started you know, having the, following the conversation. So I, I find that one person in general that goes in between uh, Teams, uh, Facebook Messenger and Telegram and Liam, it's not you. Um, it's, it's not you, Liam, it's me. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I did that to Liam the other day and he called me on it immediately where we usually chat via Telegram. And so I have to remember which friends I chat with and which tools. You see, if you were completely honest and open with everyone, you wouldn't have these problems. It's true. It's true. Transparency, Christian. It's very important. Thank you. Well, this let's see. This looks a lot like a, a Docker kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, let me go and see if there's any other questions that came through here. Uh, do, do, do. More backup discussions. Back it on up. Um, either of you guys have much experience playing with HIPAA? 
Hungry, hungry hippo. Hungry, hungry hippo. Still, I saw a pain in my fingers. Yeah, I a little bit of experience, <laughs> both as a, a consumer and having a loved one affected by HIPAA quite, quite a bit, which is my wife and um, implementation and following the rules. Yeah, I uh, just somebody who asked kind of a broad question. But has anybody have any experience configuring a Microsoft account to HIPAA? Um, they're looking to use the new healthcare templates in Teams, and we're just looking for recommendations. So it's kind of a general question if you had any specific lessons learned. But Yeah, I'm not familiar with the templates. Um, yeah, neither am I. How about you, Riz? Not really on the template side. Um, you know, the big thing, as you guys both know, I'm in Toronto, and uh, the big thing up here is the release of medical information for hockey players and whether or not they are testing positive for COVID or not. So yeah. uh, apparently the rule is if the media knows about it, they can talk about it, but the team isn't confirming or denying. So it's very entertaining. That's important stuff. But there hasn't been a, an, an NHL template for teams yet that's come out to uh, support it. <laughs> yeah. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, ice hockey is is critical to um, conversation here in the U.S. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had a distance. Oh, come on, Eric. Every time, other time I said ice in front of hockey, you got mad at me, but this is one time you just let it pass. I was waiting for you to take a breath. It never happened. Even then, you're, you're still doing it. Yeah. Okay, so Christian, it's just called hockey. Let's just get it out there. <laughs> I thought you instructed him to stop breathing. Yeah, you know, the instructions are just, they're just that. You know, they're, they're more guidelines. Simple. There's no real, ex real execution. Um, it's kind of like you know, governance in teams. It's uh, it's nice to talk about, but it fails in execution. Yeah. The New York Islanders had a third string center named Hubie McDonough. You used to call him Cousin Hubie. Um, played briefly for the Islanders and was bumped back down to the farm teams. But uh, yeah, we like to think we have a, a stake in hockey. I, I played that. in college. Did you? Ice hockey? Mm -hmm. The only one. You you are you are completely ruling out intramural field hockey. Well, no one calls field hockey hockey. They call it field hockey. He has a point, Christian. <laughs> I'm glad we have a moderator here. It's, it really makes the conversation easier. <laughs> so are you are you adding a point to your score there, Eric? I Maybe. thought that was his usefulness. How many got uh, right in question? Oh, that's, that's right. an that's an unofficial one. Oh. Yeah, it, it would be it would really be repetitive if I just show it every time. You know, the viewers the viewers are keeping track at home. Showing it every time every time would be the definition of repet repetition. Yes, exactly. So I, I just you know when it, when a point is made and it just gets tallied up, you know, everyone everyone's keeping score at home. Right. So you're just going to show it at the end. This is the play at home version. Of well, I, I can't just I can't just set the expectation of what it just has to be spontaneous. That's true. Okay. I mean, I we all know that Liam is keeping track at home. Uh, he, I'm sure he is. He's probably built some automated uh, app of some kind that is tallying all this in a far more insidious way. Too. He's yeah. already hacked into my system. In fact, his hand just came through my laptop and grabbed my pen and put a one down beside my name. So. <laughs> well, you're lucky. That's the only thing it grabbed. I feel quite violated right now, I must be honest. <laughs> so here's an actual question. Um, Arne asks, uh, are there any limitations for assigning licenses to guest users? I use Teams for education purposes without qualifying for an education license. I'd like to add students as guests but assign licenses to them for some time. I'd like to know if I could assign licenses like an Enterprise F1 license for the time of our course, approximately three months or so, so they can see, for example, uh, videos hosted on stream and remove the license later so that they have normal guest access to Teams forever without me having to pay forever. Is that possible? It's a few questions that I've noticed on there about people trying to play the licensing game with free licenses. And somebody else was asking a question before we jump back to this one about, well, I've got two free accounts. Can I have the same domain on both so I can continue to not 
So if I if I add the, from from the second batch of free over to the first one, then I'll have to pay to have that many users under my domain. Can I have my domain on these two free tenants? The answer is no. No. One domain per tenant or multiple domains on a tenant, but a domain can only live on one tenant. One to one mapping, yes. Yeah. Yeah, one one pellet, one trip. There, there's no uh, no duplication there. But uh, so uh, so for with education licenses. So this issue about um, using them for for students um, and adding them uh, as guests, uh, but assigning licenses to them for some time. Um, I mean, my first thought was like, well, if you've got a batch of license, if you're doing one class at a time, you can always add those individuals in on those paid licenses at the end of that course then remove them they go back to to you reassign the, yeah you know, reassign those but then they lose then that access that history so they can be on there as guests but that'll be a it'll be separate from the account that was used as a paid licensee right so you can't just i was a paid and i was you know you know c buck at you know, abc.edu, and now I'm a guest, and it still have access to my history and the account and everything. That, for all intents and purposes, that user is gone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm i not a licensing expert. I, th I don't think they exist in the Microsoft realm. It's, it's like the unicorns and rainbows. They don't, <laughs> everybody talks about them, but nobody's found one. Um, the yeah you're only going to get continuity of the account as long as the, i don't think the data is going to actually go anywhere for some time but well, you're not well the, data, the data wouldn't go there anywhere i mean it, it, as long as you as the license holder is the domain owner and admin um you retain all of that and so when you remove someone from the system, you're participating in those conversations. So those conversations, all the content, uh, it all is still there within the system. Right. But I'm thinking of it as I'm thinking it from the continuity for the user's perspective, um, their perspective. You know, they can't assume that they're going to have access to that data if they lose their license and move forward. Um, right. But you know, it's like like you said for any other user. If I'm the administrator of that tenant and I roll somebody out, I'm going to get access to their data. I can reclaim it and do what I will with it. And right. They should be doing that, but um, that's about the only continuity you're going to get. Well, one caveat there is, though, if you have a, you know, sort of 90 day class, three month class, and you have a student that um, is gone for the next 90 days, doesn't take that class, but comes back to that same professor you know, three months later for uh, another class. And when when the admin is going in, when the teacher is going in and adding them all back in, you can always reassign that or assign that individual back to their earlier profile. There's still a history of that profile in the system. Yeah. You can re-enable that. In fact, best practices when it comes to directory management is never to really delete users. You mark them as disabled. You may deactivate their account, but don't delete them because that runs in that potentially creates referential integrity problems and everybody knows with SharePoint for instance when you delete a user out of SharePoint that data becomes you know orphaned and has resulted in other problems so I'm sure it's the same with other systems so a strange irony here Sean is that as, as you're talking your, your your volume is coming in and out but I think your mic may have just slipped down a bit there you go yeah oh, okay sorry about that I um, yeah, so I mean, strategically, I was going to go back to the point that Sean just made, which which is, it wasn't clear to me who who the person was that was asking the question. Are they an administrator? Are they a specific instructor, teacher, professor, what have you? So if you're creating, I mean, education licenses are duration based. Whether you're you're in that educational facility for one year, three years, four years, you know, in my case, ten years, whatever, however long you were there. Or are going to be there. There's there's a life cycle and an expectation of how that licensing is going to operate. So if if the person who's asking the question is an instructor, then the the conversation should go to a different level, and the person 
or body who is actually identifying and applying licenses. And the individual should just be making a recommendation that yes, all these people need actual licenses in order to view the following information as opposed to trying to find workarounds. Because if, if he's having this issue, other people are having the same issue. True. And there's, there's a better way to, to answer the question from a higher level. Hey, uh, Eric, has anyone ever commented that you look a bit like Jake Gyllenhaal? Actually, yes. Yeah, it's the hair. It's, it's, nah, it's more than the hair. It's, you, you know, I've, I've been called worse. Um, and you sound a bit like him, too. I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. It's the acoustics here in, in my office. You know, the, the doors down the right. If the, if the doors are closed. locker room, wherever you may be. The doors are closed and the lockers are closed. Uh, I, I sound more like him, but if everything's open, which strangely never happens, then, uh, yeah, not as much. I still, I, it, I, I, it makes me think of Ignite um, with uh, my grandson, where my daughter put the fake beard on him, and I did the side by side with Riz. I'm looking for the picture now, so I can put it on screen here. Oh it man, was hilarious! Hang on. Yeah, uh, there we go. Look, oh, like, I don't have the side by side, but no, sure, here, right. here was the picture that was one of those those aging apps. <laughs> yeah, that's it's fantastic. Like, so I, I put Izzy up side by side with Eric. It was hilarious. That is my child. That's pretty much what we back with here. Uh, yeah. On the scorecard, I, I award you no points for that one, Christian. So. Uh, come on. Give him half a point. Uh, very, then, How old is young Izzy now? Uh, he is 10 months. He's walking. Uh, he is every mobility phase. Yes, it's it's funny. So he, uh, yeah, he's now looks like that. Wow, you kid. He's got my. He's trying to support your do there. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I don't know. Uh, uh, the 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 workmen's my son-in-law. Like they they don't lose hair in their family either. So he's gonna have a healthy head of hair. He'll he'll likely be shorter than all of his cousins. Um. But, uh, you know, I've got you know, my three boys, which are all taller than me. They're all 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". Um, uh, and, and then my daughter, who's um, more Hobbit-like. <laughs> or to be politically correct, not 6'2", 6'3", or 6'4". Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Which is it's, it's funny. It's like I've got six sisters. I think both of you guys know that. And they're all Hobbit-esque. And uh, yeah, and yet, and a couple of them have just, just giant children. So, good times. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, no other questions right now in the watch party. If anybody's watching on the live stream and wants to ask some questions, um, yeah, any other topics you want to bring up while I look across other devices here, Sean? <laughs> Comes to me, huh? Uh, I. Do not at the moment. I'll try and manufacture one for your next go round. By manufacture, do you mean make up completely off the top of your head, or um, if I cannot find a a better stand-in? Got it. It's actually uh, from a live person as opposed to my imagination. Yeah, well, generally we'll go, Eric, and we'll pull from uh, you know a couple of the communities that the. the you know, the AMA communities out on Facebook. Um, usually a ton of questions that are asked there. I got an interesting question here as we were talking just through email. Um, clearly really topical and, and poignant, um, efficient, and, and time sensitive. Um, someone wants to know if I'm available for a conference call tomorrow at 2 o'clock. That's, I love that. I love those, those completely random emails that come in when people just send you invites. This is now graduated on the marketing side to invites. They send you an invite for tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Right. So that it will pop up and remind you that they're harassing you. And now, then, is that, Eric, let me ask, is that there's two, it could be two about two things. One, um, third party lead generation services. Correct. Or two, outsourced engineering to a, a, another part of the world. So engineering services. So it's one of those two things. 
I don't know when the company's going to figure out to that sweet spot of lead gen services specifically for companies that uh, don't want outsourced engineering services. There's there's got to be some opportunity specific, a marketing campaign. Tired of getting just standalone lead gen and getting pinged by these outsourced engineering firms. What we do is... Uh, I had one, I'm just trying to point out, I'm time while Sean had things up a question, but I have one great story on this, which was the most interesting uh, lead gen marketing piece that I've ever seen. It happened a few months ago. And it were it was it was two people, probably really only one person with two email addresses, but two people who had a conversation about what to provide me with and what they thought we could use with each other while copying me in the in the CC field. So it was Hey, Tom, uh, I really think that Eric could use um, this list and access to this part of our MVP. And um, and let's discount him 50 percent because he looks like Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, can we do that? <laughs> and then 35 minutes later, the other person, other person would respond also copy me again and say, no, uh, you know, we can give them all these things, but the discount is too large. But I guess since you offered it already, we could still extend it, you know, call in the next 29 minutes. And there's a little ticker at the bottom. Uh, that was, it was annoying, but very entertaining. I thought that was really creative of, of this person or these people to wow. do that. Eric, so you got insights into their, their, uh, their sales process. Did you take advantage of that awesome deal? I did call within the 29 minute limit. <laughs> Three monthly installments of 999. That's right. I, I shared, actually, Gerson, I gave him your credit card. Uh, oh, thank you. Ironically, we're having to have this conversation. Yeah, uh, yeah I shared some, some insights of my own, uh, particularly words that had four letters in them, which <laughs> felt particularly appropriate at that time. Hey. Uh, it was fun. Hey, related to this, though, uh, you know, through LinkedIn, and I had uh, posted out there, got a lot of um, Twitter and Facebook responses and comments on, and I wasn't joking. I said, my daily process now is that I go through and I'm, uh, you know, uh, the first thing I do is I clean from my inbox all of those uh, items that came through that didn't get picked up by the filters in Office 365, and it happens, and I don't stress about it and freak out and, and scream via social about you know what comes through the filters if you ever go look at your spam folder and how oh, many hundreds per day did not get through i'm thankful for you know to only have a handful per day this my second step though um uh, is to go on to linkedin and do the same cleanup in my my inbox my third item is is muting or unfollowing people who have gone politics insane a little bit of politics is fine. A lot of, <clears throat> of politics is not okay. It's not healthy. Um, but this on the second one is really kind of my question. Do you guys remember when part of setting up your LinkedIn profile would ask you what kind, what contact types that you allow? That yeah. was, and I think it's still in there as part of the profile. And yet, from what I can tell, there's absolutely nothing that's done to meet that allowed contact. I've often wondered about that. And so why even ask the question? Either provide the solution, and this is something that uh, I'm actually was, uh, it was bad enough over the weekend that I, I'm gonna write a letter and submit it to our, uh, write a, I'm gonna, it'll be a strongly worded letter. No, I'm gonna, uh, in That's the- so, That sounds so similar to, I'm gonna burn down the building. I don't know why, it just, yeah, yeah slight disparity there. No, but uh, I was going to threaten the letter. I'm going to write the letter. I'm going to write the letter. And just saying that I was going to write a letter made me feel good, like I had done something and then I didn't need to actually write the letter. No, I was going to uh, write a, a letter for the uh, regional director, uh, one of the DLs, uh, where it gets directly to Microsoft executives. I am, uh, this is a problem that's been around with LinkedIn for years. Like, why is it so difficult for me to be able to go in and add in my profile? Here's how I would like to be contacted. Here's how I would not like to be contacted. And because when you're contacting somebody, it's really simple. To, it's like, what what is this regarding? Is it, uh, you know, it, 
am I reaching out to this person to about service products and services? Well, if their profile is flagged as I don't want to hear about products and services, pretty simple. Then you don't allow that to go through. And anybody who abuses that, then you block their their account. You do some kind of administrative shenanigans. So I would I would probably take that a bit. I don't know if I take it back a step or forward a step, but either way, you guys can decide. Um, you're making you're making the assumption that somebody is reaching out to you via LinkedIn and using that contact method. Where I think that a lot of marketers are just getting your email from somewhere on the interweb and sending you the information through LinkedIn because it's easier for them, not because that's how they got your information. Right, so, but no, but email address is I don't know. First initial, you know, first half of your last name, let's just say. Well, I understand that with reaching out as contact, the majority of these are through in mail. So it is through the yeah. formal the formal process where they can't LinkedIn can have some, you know, a, a level of control over who gets contacted. I, so yeah. right now I have, I have an open profile. Anybody can reach out and try and connect with me. And that's and I get that. That's through the the connections. And in all likelihood, when I have somebody, I don't know, I've never had an interaction with them. But they say, hey, I caught your webinar today or something or other. I, I realize it's a real human being. I'm more likely to connect with that person. And I get the other just blind, just somebody hit the connect button. There's no note there. The lesson here, people, is always add a note of why you want to connect with that person. Um, I mean, sometimes it's obvious. Like if I find that I'm Sean has unfriended me again. I, I need to reconnect with him. And, and, uh, you know, uh, it was but, a device you know, error. It, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what was that, Eric? You're breaking up. Yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn, LinkedIn got deleted off my phone and it took out all my contacts. I don't know how that happened. Those LinkedIn bombs are horrible. Mm hmm. Anyway, I, that, but that was my, my feedback too. And I'm, I'm going to provide this uh, uh, in that DL just because I, I, I think it's it's enough people are complaining about it. It doesn't look like anything's been done. I'm not sure why. I'd love to know what the roadmap is. Now that Microsoft owns LinkedIn, they've got some, uh, you know, they could provide some peer pressure on them to uh, to go in and, and to look at this issue. But I mean, I see a, lot, a complaint from a lot of people that it's just getting more and more about spam. Every day, it's every single day, so I'm going through and deleting these. How how many emails do you get weekly, what monthly, doesn't matter, that are actually of value? People who are reaching out to you saying, hey, I caught your webinar, um, you know, love to connect with you on whether or not cats can have uh, fleas in multi-countries. Uh, they can, by the way. I thought so. Yeah. But True story. How many, how many of those do you actually get? Because I, yeah. One out, I, out of 20. One right. out of 20. Yeah. So what's the value of, of actually reviewing them? Right. If, you, if it's one out of 20, I would personally let my emails stack up and then delete them all. And if that individual you know, wants to connect that value, they'll find another way of doing so. We, the three of us, all have enough content on the web with our email addresses that they could find it pretty easily and just reach out directly and not be reliant on email. So I would just kill it completely and see how much your life changes. I'll, or I'll find a time when I need software development services based in India. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's really what it comes down yeah. to. Yeah. I, it, it, it's as I'm a struggle. And as whether my OCD would allow me to turn that off. And <laughs> yes. uh, one, yeah. of the, one of my one of the things I've tried to do um, with content that comes in through the spam filters um, and actually lands in my inbox, just like Nicole's, which is really she's so excited to talk to me tomorrow too, uh, which naturally is a convenient time for me. Uh, when I look at her note, there's no unsubscribe. There's no, you know, mm -hmm. none of the legalities, if you will, um, are applied to her. So, you know, I can just delete it, forget about it. But I've been trying through COVID since I have so much time mm -hmm. to actively unsubscribe from things. And it's surprising how many don't have it. I mean, I could name names in our community who I've never given my email address to yeah. and companies, whatnot, 
And yeah, their stuff is all over my inbox and I never asked for it. So where is it coming from? It's not coming from a conference. It's not coming from me. So where is it? And the laws are, I mean, supposedly the law here in Canada is CASL, C-A-S-L, uh, supposedly strict, but there, no one's seen any enforcement in five years since it came out. So what was the point in actually putting it in place? Good point. Yep. Which is why it's part of the uh, the daily activity is uh, is it, it's not enough just to delete them. I unsubscribe. I block their domain. I I do kind of the steps. I've you know, I've got it down pretty pretty quick to to go through the series of things with email and with LinkedIn and I subscribe think, them for a bunch of porn. I think you should write them all a letter. Christian. I should. I know that was letter to the editor. strongly worded. Strong right. word letter. Strong yeah. word. The, the other thing you can do. With I need to buy stamps. I need to write it down. Yes, stamps. You can buy. You can. You're in. The, you're in, the, in uh, the greater United States region. You can just print it out. You know, print what's out the, the stamps. What's the fun in that? We don't have that here. Uh, I just like to point that out. Oh. Um, I was going to make a great point, and then poof. <laughs> that age thing gets in the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So one thing I uh, did do was uh, find a potential issue, ugh, potentially interesting topic, um, virtual breakout rooms and teams. Um, people, I found a thread on tech community where it, multiple pages of people asking questions about that. And it turns out that it is on the roadmap and it will be delivered um, potentially Q4 of this year. Well, that that goes directly to the question that we've sorry eric what did you say sorry i was throwing in a plug there sean where did you find that information <laughs> oh, yeah. uh the question was on techcommunity.microsoft.com the answer was on roadmap.office.com yeah the so, greatest resource for anybody watching who doesn't know about it please go enjoy we routinely with plug it on this show yeah. right with christian compliments please well, this is one of the uh, questions that has been asked about all of these events, um, everything that's moving to online, and one of, of obviously the the missing uh, links to any any successful conference. Uh, talking about the tier one Microsoft events specifically, the value is not in the content of the sessions and the, the keynote. And look, there's great content. I, I don't want to uh, you know, demean that process of going through there and what's being shared. I am marginal, about, marginally offended by what you just said. It, yeah. it's, it's, but it's, but it's about the connections that you make that, that, that are there. And so by having it you know, virtual, that's one of the most difficult things. And th you know, for the first big event for us within the Microsoft ecosystem, the, the MVP, uh, our annual conference, which is uh, held on Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington. Or was at one time. It was. So it was moved virtual this year. And so we moved it, uh, you know, everything virtual. I'm not going to have to just talk over you right now because I think what you're about to say is uh, is NBA specific. And we can't condone you saying these things. So please cleanse your brain and, and only let content come forward that is public domain. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, no leaks except for the vegetable. So, uh, yeah, so the, one of the biggest, uh, you know, the, the biggest concerns about this move is is how do we make up for that gap around the, the connection? We have uh, coming up this next month is Microsoft Inspire, which was also moved. That's the the business uh, conference. So it's all marketing and salespeople. It's uh, formerly the was, partner conference, the partner conference. This was going to be my 11th year in a row of going. So really disappointed uh, last two years, I've driven down from Salt Lake down to Vegas. Beautiful drive, um, and uh, it, 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 it's. Uh, I, I spent very little time. Obviously, the keynotes; uh, those are always always exciting. They Microsoft spent a lot of money. They did some really cool demos. Um, so Satya and Julia White being two of my favorites, and their presentations are usually just stellar. But it's. Um, uh, I spent the majority of my time at that conference in the expo hall, talking with vendors, talking with partners, going through and talking with the booths. How do you do that in these virtual events? Sure. And so that's big. This big, been this big question. So I'm glad to see something that's officially on the roadmap around these. I think that'll help around having these separate spaces that you can go into and collaborate. 
Now, how that shows up, how do I go in? Like, is it just a list of rooms, of topics? Am I able to kind of preview, like, who's in there, what's being discussed um, before I commit to jumping into a conversation and taking up a spot? Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do that. Yeah, I put the link to the roadmap item in the uh, chat if you want to share it. They don't provide too much detail on it, but uh, there's a little bit of right up there. So Christian, to your point, uh, that's a really that's a really nice URL, by the way. <laughs> yes, it's, it's super yeah. simple. Well, you can reach it easily. Uh, Christian, okay. to your point, I, I've, I've been in a few conversations now for a number of upcoming conferences who are struggling virtually with how <laughs> that URL is even prettier, uh, who are struggling with how to provide um, vendor spaces for their conference. You know, vendors are, are spending money to support the conference and assist in its presence. And there's really no, aside from having you know, their logo on a, a couple of slides that every speaker is, uh, is compelled to speak to, there isn't anything that they can do to really draw on the community. You know, when you're, at, when you're at a booth and you've got a big fishbowl full of, um, you know, scotch or, uh, or M&Ms or whatever candy floats your boat and you're able to actually take a step forward into the little hallway, you know, the common spaces and, and talk to somebody and engage somebody and say hello, that's fine. In that's you know it's easy we've all done it. In the virtual conversation, there there are a number of issues with it. One of course is I'm stuck here, right? So even if you put me in a virtual space or in give me my own channel and have somebody come and click onto me and then see me and talk to me and engage with me, I have no control over it as the vendor. So I'm paying to basically sit in my own little fishbowl with hope that somebody's going to click and and engage with me. There's no outward conversation, which is a very bad thing for all of us because no sponsors, no vendors, no conferences. Right. That's that's the first problem. The other problem is, uh, you know, Christian, I'm, I'm attend attending um, Inspire as well, or WPC as I like to call it. And Which is now free, by the way. If anybody is yeah. interested, inspire.microsoft.com. You can go and register now. It's all open. So Correct. So, uh, but like everyone else, I'm only going to be interested in what I'm interested in, right? I'm going to be, I'm going to want to see the, the keynotes. I'm going to want to see two or three speakers that I know who, uh, stop that, who are going, I see you both laughing at the same thing. Who Wait, are, Eric, you're saying you're only interested in things that you're interested in? You find that interesting? I do. Or do you find that it's, <laughs> I do have some empirical evidence that will show that people are only interested in what they're interested in. That's right. Well, if you stop interrupting me, the point was that you guys are so happy I'm here. I can't wait to see the fan mail after this. It's going to be awesome. Liam has already, as I said, reached out, giving me three or four different uh, points for this one. <laughs> the point, coming back to it, is there's a huge gap, and it's going to be a problem. Because I, for one, am not going to click on uh, the Nigel Frank International you know, <laughs> booth. And I use pick them for a reason. They always have a massive presence. They get like this huge space. They have 20 people there. They have great swag and, and giveaways and whatnot. I'm just not going to click on them. So how is that going to be a value for them to participate going forward? One other part to that too is some of these events, they're trying, they're attempting to charge the same amounts for sponsorship or something like that. Yeah, and and it's it's not working out for them. And so I know a number of events where they've had to they've had to go and adjust their numbers. Imagine that. Right, I know. Well, yeah. it, but look, a little bit of understanding though, with some of these events that already had spaces that had moved past dates where they get their funds back to their physical location, so they're attempting to pay for what they've already spent out of pocket um to do then the virtual event and all the different pieces. So like like I get the pain that's there, but it's also why there's insurance. Um, but you, you you can't charge for the same experience, obviously. But hey, there there's a question here um, out in the chat. So Eric asks, uh, has anyone used yet the SharePoint Lists app, which is not yet available? So the answer is no. And so he asks, when will it be released officially? 
I feel that I have to jump in here and say, just so you know, that was not me. <laughs> I know. That's right. Correct. <laughs> the other Eric. Yes, thank you. I just apparently there's one other Eric out there. Wow. Who just call it? me Jake. I yeah. think that really simplifies things. That's right. Especially Sean. I just think of you as Izzy's um, bearded doppelganger. Sound double? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, you guys excited about the uh, the Lists app? Which I, I think the official release date is soon. <laughs> I can't wait. Summer? Seeing, see a lot of stuff at Q3, yeah. Yeah, I think it, they're saying late summer, but yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, yes, I, yes, I'm looking forward to it. Sean, you're not? A mixed bag, yeah, because people are going to want to know when to use that. We talked about this last week, I think, when to use it versus when to use other stuff that's already out there. What does it replace? What does it overlap? I don't have any guidance for them on that, other than pick your poison. Well, seeing how it's not available, so um, we're not yet talking to either or. Uh, you know, and that's that's part of it. Like we've seen it, the the previews of it. I'm pretty excited about it. I mean, I look at this as the. I, or I made the comment, and somebody called me. I think it was last week that said, because uh, I said, "Hey, this is like the democratization of the of the list app." And you have common users are not generally going into uh, SharePoint to build lists and use that capability, but Teams, which is much more end user centric. Uh, they're more likely to then go in and build this kind of capability out of lists. And somebody said, well, why can't users go in and use it in SharePoint? Is it, it's not a, hey, they can't. I'm just saying that it's it's it, it, it's a, it was, the list app was built by the people that create SharePoint lists. It's a an evolution of that brought over to the team's environment. They've packaged it, brought it over, and they're providing all these out-of-the-box templates and a lot of other capabilities, which is designed for the masses, whereas SharePoint is more of a power user IT pro platform. Um, and so I think it's just you're going to see a broader set of users going in for the first time, building lists and playing with it, and uh, which I think is a, a really exciting thing. So. What will actually happen to your point, Sean, of which things that they'll use and when and where? And that's something I think organizations will need to figure out um, what makes sense if you're trying to do something more complex and that you're having the IT organizations help in building. Maybe that'll be more SharePoint centric versus if it's something that, hey, it's at your own, go and do it on your own inside of Teams. Indubitably. Yeah, well, I have to jump in here from a, a this is in my wheelhouse governance strategy conversation, which is like most things Microsoft comes out with. It's it's going to be something that is really super powerful at a point. The point is not going to be release day one. Uh, the point will be six, 12 months after. Look at Teams. Teams is three years old. Most people think that it's brand new. Uh, it's, it's a walk before you run conversation for sure. Yep. And organizations really have to take a look at who should be using it why and the business case the use case around it before they just hand it out to everybody and let them run wild it's it's replacing tech technology that's already existing for, for most cases and you just need to make sure that you're handing it to the right people it's governed in the right way i mean you're, you're dealing with information so let's not be uh, too too light in the practices which are uh, are being deployed now, I have to, to say that, uh, so uh, Noah Sparks and I did an interview with Mark Cashman talking about the list apps. And one of the questions that I, I asked and, uh, was uh, about my legacy lists that I've built inside of SharePoint. And you have kind of a list homepage as part of the list app and whether those would be surfaced. And he said, yes, yes, all of those things will be surfaced through. And so we there will be this kind of, this concept of the, modern lists versus legacy lists, you know, built through this environment. I call them that. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, and if you are interested in seeing that, let me paste that link. You can go to buckleyplanet.com and search for uh, Loop 365, which is the series that we interviewed him for. Um, and we're, guys, we're at the top of the hour. One last question though, um, Eric, the other Eric, 
or he claims <laughs> to be an Eric, you know, uh, mm-hmm. asks, do you believe teams will, will become the main user entry point in the future? To what? <laughs> to the world. Yeah. <laughs> to everything, Sean. Well, it's not going to be my everything. I think for most, uh, you think of, uh, you know, SharePoint being the, the primary focus being the portal experience. Um, you know, Yammer for those organizations that use it is that community uh, site, which is integrated into the portal experience. But from the day-to-day workplace, I, mean, I think the hub for teamwork uh, moniker fits Microsoft Teams. I do believe it, it will become the uh, the primary first location that users will go into and to get project work done. I mean, look, if I were an enterprise user coming in logging to my system, I would think that the portal with the company news might be the homepage, that first place that I go. But when I then go to get work done, I'm going to work on my first of my three projects today that I have open. It'll be inside of Teams. So that'll be your second first stop. Correct. First season, spend three hours on LinkedIn in the name of efficiency. And then he <laughs> to go to Teams. Right. <laughs> you know, it is, it is, Eric put, points out, said, yes, but are you an end user? Or are you an IT pro? Or are you a dev? And like, obviously, if you were a developer um, that's logging in for the day, you know what you were working on until 2 a.m., you're likely not going to go, let's go see what's happening in the chat. Inside of go to XKCD and right. check out the current XKCD. That's right. So I think the answer for me is, like, once again, let's go to use case, let's go to persona, let's go to who the right individual is that will do it. To me, I'm, and I'm a good example of this because I'm very different from Sean, um, not just follically. No, you're not. General. You're same. We're, it's it's almost like looking into a mirror. It, like, it is uh, a mirror in my view. This, it's just, it's a mirror. I'm looking at myself. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to put the headphones on. Right. There you go. And put a dress on. It'll be confusing. Bad wick and... I'm actually not frozen there. I was just stunned by what you said. Um, <laughs> because because you're going to mirror that, Sean? That's We were talking about mirror images. Can we then- answer Eric's question? Uh, the answer is yes. I Personally, I see Teams for the business user as a desktop replacement. Yeah. And part B there is that it's called a kilt, Sean, and he's wearing one right now. No, he's not. He's not. No pants Monday. I, I was going to say, and I, I would... First, I'd have to be wearing pants in order to be wearing a kilt. So. <laughs> well, gentlemen, we'll we'll end on the pantless note. Thank you pantless so much note. for your time. It's a high point. Yeah. That was quite. Yeah. I found today's conversation quite revealing. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Good to have you along, Riz. Thanks, man. Good it's to be here. We'll do it again next week. It's a drafty conversation. Hey, well, for all of those that are interested, so we'll be back this evening. So um, like again. To- so we'll be. Uh, this is our EMEA edition, our APAC edition, which will be at 6 p.m. Pacific. And Eric, you're always welcome. You know, put the kids to bed. Join us. You know, you, know, you told me you were just going to run this then. Um, awkward. No. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thanks a lot, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Take it easy. Bye. Uh, so okay, we're officially live. We're broadcasting. Uh, thanks again for joining everybody. This is the Microsoft Community Office Hours, and Christian Buckley here, Office Apps and Services MVP and Microsoft Regional Director. I'm here with Hal and Sean. Hal, introduce yourself. Well, hello there. Name here is Hal Hostepper, also an MVP on uh, uh, Outlook, and uh, been in the program for 23 years. Hopefully, after yeah, next week, I can say 24. He deserves a monument. I am Sean McDonough. Uh, I've been an Office Apps and Services MVP for about four years now, so I'm the relative young in, in the group. You're the noob. Noob. Mm-hmm. I think Mike is going to join us, too, so we, we might have a couple people uh, jump in. Um, 23 years, really, Hal? Yeah, it, uh, since 1997. Excuse, yeah, 1997. Mm-hmm. Man, Actually, that's 1996, long November of 96, but uh, even with their record keeping, it, it didn't quite out to be, it would, it would be more than that now. But uh, so I'm, I'm pushing to, I'm pushing to make it to 25 to get it, uh, I think probably the only 25 year ring in existence. 
Wow. I'm surprised the records weren't lost in a fire. I'm getting a little bit of echo on you, Hal. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's feedback through you, Sean, or did, have you muted it all, uh, your mic, while he was while Hal was talking? No, I didn't. Okay, because it, it started and stopped, so it was just odd. So I don't know if the AI is adjusting or whatever it's what's doing, but we'll, um, we'll be smooth as appropriate. We'll we'll rise above it. We're professionals. Um, all right. So here, so I had a couple questions that came through uh, from this morning session that I want to tackle. Again, if you're watching um, on the uh, live stream in one of our locations, feel free to post your question there. We'll try to address those as well. And I'll make sure that I'm monitoring all locations this time so that I've got everything open so I can look and find any other questions. Um, but here's one. Uh, so we've got, of course, uh, there's always there's a ton of teams related questions that are coming through. And that's why uh, Sean just ditched. He fears the team's questions. Now, there he is. <laughs> I saw you over there. I was just po poking fun at you. Um, I've actually got an answer to one from last Monday. Uh, oh. Last Monday afternoon. That's, that's teams related. Well, why don't we start with that one? Okay. Well, the question was asked uh, about, uh, I don't remember precisely how it went exactly was to say that uh, they were having issues because they had to to leave teams on one device before joining teams on another device and uh, that last friday afternoon was one of those cases which if you remember i actually got into the call on my uh, on my phone i was running teams on the phone and basically all i did when i got home was to set the the, the, the phone on the counter leaving teams running opened up the uh, my surface here and did the usual connect your teeth and uh, I was on in both places. It didn't ask me any questions. It was in the same tenant. It just, I was there twice. Um, so I, I closed the one on the phone and carried on my business and I don't believe anybody in the world noticed any difference. So I guess the answer is no, you don't have to close one to start the other. Well, I know that other people have done something like the exact same scenario, you know, sitting at their desktop, but two browsers and having a desktop client and browser and on another tenant logged in and, and listening in on a meeting and muting on one, answering a question over here and participating in the other. And I know that there's quality participation when that happens, uh, <laughs> that, that kind of multitasking. Uh, but again, I mean, likewise, it, it didn't throw any errors. It was the person's login, the same profile on two different tenants. Um, I don't know. I mean, you're you're talking about meetings also in a, as a as a guest in a meeting, or was it the same tent? I guess it was. If you were on this call and joining, you were a guest in both places. But well, the thing of it is, is it makes it makes a difference to teams quite a bit, even though you may have the same. You may be using the same email address, joeblow at live.com. If you're in the, let's say, in the live.com tenant, you that's, of course, there's no such thing as, as such. But just as, as, as an example, if you were logged in there and you joined as a guest in another tenant, even though you had a guest login in that tenant, things like uh, the chat and emojis won't work. So what you have to do is you have to leave the tenant that you're in and and go join the tenant where the meeting is, even though it's the same credentials in order for emojis and and uh, and, uh, and chats and things like that to work. It's it's kind of a constant pain in the butt because in my case, uh, the business uses Teams pretty extensively. We've got a fairly well-developed team with a number of, of channels and so forth. So, and we came here from Slack, and that was, oh my goodness me, it was so much fun coming here from Slack, not so much because of the way Slack worked, but because of the way Slack didn't work. Um, we would have, uh, for example, a, a monthly meeting, a bi-weekly, bi-monthly meeting. Uh, the, uh, the the meeting was held on Skype, the back and forth chatting was done on, on, uh, on, on Slack, uh, we would be looking at a dealing with an online OneNote document. And of course, now all you've got to do is when you run your meeting in there is you just open it up in a channel and, and you and you pin the tabs for whatever it is you want to the channel. It's 
Holy turf. I, I was, and I think you and I discussed that once upon a long time ago, Sean. Uh, Sean, Sean, but uh, Christian, yes. We've been mistaken. Uh, I know we had this conversation times. this morning. It's like a mirror. Well, you and Eric and I, Eric Riz and I are like triplets. It's just, it's, it's uncanny. It's freaky. I know. Well, I mean, everybody knows this is the Pete hairpiece, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and we do that just so Sean and I can differentiate. So, <laughs> Custom rug. Yeah. You know. So, uh, but I think, Hal, thanks for bringing that up. That I think that was actually Eden who asked that question. And uh, she's got kind of a part two to that question. So she asked this morning one of the questions that I missed. Because um, I, I, I believe it was her was asking about that switching over in between. She also asked, uh, went on a Teams call and you receive another call. So they've got the uh, you know integrated devices. They've they, they're doing that. So is there a way to send a quick response when declining the call? And uh, and my response was well, it depends on where you're receiving the call. Um, if you as, even figured that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, one benefit of uh, of receiving calls like uh, you know on my mobile device is that I can decline a call that's coming through and and send the text message. If it's that, but I don't know if Teams has similar capability. Uh, I know that there are a few features that are in that realm that are on the roadmap. There are some things that are in user voice, um, but I wasn't aware of any way if you're receiving, if you've got another Teams chat that's coming in. I mean, because the, the only other way to, to kind of answer this is that uh, if you are um, uh, sitting in a Teams meeting, and it's going long, and the next one starts, or you get an invite for a meet now in, um, you can respond if it's an ongoing meeting, if there's that overlap, into the chat for that other meeting. So I'll often, I'll go in and and uh, uh, have kind of side chats while a meeting is ongoing. So that's, uh, it's, it's not the answer to Eden's question, um, but if it is another Teams meeting, uh, there's the chat that's associated with that. You, without joining the meeting, if you're already a member of that uh, that that group, you could actually go in and respond within the chat and say, "I'm in the middle of this other meeting. It's going long. Uh, I'll join when I can." But if you're one of those people who can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time, you're taking your life into your own hands. Correct. <laughs> it is life and death. I mean, it is teams. So. Yes. <laughs> Death is a team uh, effort. All right. Uh, again, I'm just going to check and see any new questions coming in. Nothing so far. All right. So here's the other one. Um, uh, Ramey asked this morning, hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, is there a way to deny access to Teams desktop clients using personal accounts? I mean, only allow users to sign into Teams with only an organization account. Um, and so he had asked this question a few days ago inside of the Teams community, had a couple different responses. One of them was a conditional access. He says, I create conditional access to block access to Teams assigned to guests and external users, but it didn't work. Currently, users can access Teams with personal accounts and can send sensitive information and documents. So, uh, you know, one thing that you can do in the creation of a new team is you can go in there and define it's the block list, the allow list, the new phrasing, blacklist, whitelist. Yeah. Um, you can go in and as part of that setup and say only allow from, you know, your organization, for example. Um, you can uh, uh, block uh, Gmail accounts, Hotmail accounts, those kinds of things. So that uh, if you if you block the the big three, Gmail, Hotmail, and uh, um, I don't know you you know, Live or 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 uh, Yahoo Mail, whatever it, you're you're seeing people come in, you know the, those methods, then that's going to get rid of you know 95% of of those anonymous logins. And it'll force them to then use their company email. And you make that part of the invite, say you can only log in via your company email. Um, otherwise, the, the other method is to um, 
to to set up a uh, you know that 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 space the, uh, the the temporary space the holding pattern the waiting room uh, and allow in only those people that have the approved login. So I, that well, that's meetings. I know that's not a a team. I'm just thinking of out of the box capabilities today. Are you gentlemen aware of any other methods monitoring other conversation as well? Uh, no, I I know conditional access. You should be able to apply those policies in some form, um, and those you can establish conditional access rules based on IP blocks as well. So if there is, you know, if all of these <laughs> accounts are coming out of some IP block based in China or something like that, you know, you can black uh, block list a huge swath of, uh, you know, an entire subnet and just don't allow access from any address that uh, originates or any communication that originates from that place. So I don't have the admin portal open to to look into this, but I believe you can't even know after the fact go into existing team and change that can reconfigured existing team as the team owner and set up that block list or allow list. Yeah, let me go ahead and look now. <laughs> Hal, I noticed that uh, you're blot you're you're uh, sporting the blurred background rather than the uh, exotic locations uh, fake background today. Yeah, well, I just got here a little bit late, and that was the first thing on the list. So yeah, yeah I could yeah. put something else up. Uh, yeah, you do you. I'll do me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, I was talking with uh, so somebody dropped in on uh, uh, on Friday. Sean Owen Allen dropped by. Oh, oh did he? In, in town, yeah, he's, he was in town for doing some work, and then was driving down with down in southern Utah with family, and uh, we hung out for about an hour. How's he and, doing? I was doing doing well uh, over there at the zones, uh, and uh, we were talking about. He, he was uh, lecturing me on uh, how to, to get better green screen type effects. He's like, you know, you're using uh, OBS. You should be using, I think he was XSplit he was pushing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, need, need to try out. That's what I need to do is finally get everything working the, the way that I need it to work. Let's go throw some new tools in the mix. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> While you're looking that up, uh, let me see, just check any other questions. Again, if you're watching on the live stream, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, and ask, and we will uh, try to address those. And all right, um, let's see another question that we had here. Um, well, Sean, are you still looking that up in, in the admin center or looking up? Um, well, yeah, I'm adding, you know, you can set basically uh, IP subnets, um, basically ports and different things. I'm trying to see where I actually set the rules, policy packages, let's see. Well, they've got predefined policy packages that might be of use to people like education, teachers, healthcare, clinical workers, Public safety officers. That's pretty clever. I don't do much Teams administration, really. Yeah. yeah but well, the org-wide org settings. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Hal. Well, I was going to say there's Teams administration and there's Teams administration. Unfortunately. To really do appropriate administration on Teams, you've got to be able to get to that that part of the administrative console. You've also got to look at groups. You've also got to look at SharePoint. And I think there's one other place or two yet where you have to look at if you want to make sure that everybody has the appropriate permissions to do whatever it is they may happen to do. Um, 
I've got a situation with teams in our organization where uh, I can turn team stuff on and off, but I really don't have any, uh, I'm, I'm an owner, but I really don't have access to the admin console. And uh, Greg, guest access is turned on in the admin console, but it isn't working. So there's about four other spots I need to go check. And because I don't have admin access, I can't go check them, which is kind of a continual pain. I wish that things related to teams could all be addressable from the teams area. Yeah, the team's admin center, uh, you know, clearly there's, you can control external access by domain. So, um, Christian, what you were saying about, uh, you know, email accounts coming from Yahoo and whatnot, you can add different domains as well as uh, whether or not they're allowed or blocked. So that's within the Office 365, Microsoft 365 admin console. If you go into the Teams specific admin console within there, uh, within that <coughs> unified view, you will see the settings under um, org wide settings for external access. Okay. Yeah, I'll see if uh, if he's uh, watching, if there's any other questions or follow-up. Might have something in the written word here uh, later if he's not uh, participating. Um, I don't see any other comments there. Um, well, next, another question here. Here's a SharePoint-related one. Um, uh, well, it's Teams and SharePoint. But uh, kind of goes to the, some of the complexity, Hal, of what you're just talking about. Is there a way of preserving mm -hmm. this from James? Is there a way of preserving the SharePoint site when a team is deleted? Um, so I'm wondering if applying a site retention policy would protect it, but I can't find anything uh, through uh, a competing search uh, search site to confirm that. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, you know, I mean, one one thing I would say is that the the strong recommendation is not to delete. Uh, we talked about that this users, morning. Archive it. Um, deleting is uh, is it, a rare thing, and and honestly, that uh, deleting it likely breaks a number of security and compliance policies in the vast majority of organizations. As uh, well as referential integrity. Correct. Yeah, that's what we were talking about this morning. Yeah. So, I, I mean, my first thought was that, well, if you have it, you backed up, if you've got it archived, um, then uh, you should have a copy of that site. Um, it depends on how deleted a, a a site is but yeah yeah and the one link i found which i'll include here which i'm sure was checked and referenced um let me get to the chat window there we go now it calls out that the sharepoint site and its files will be deleted but you can recover deleted teams for up to 30 days. So that recycle bin functionality um, is in tenant wide holds. As well as the additional conditions Christian was stating. Yeah, the. Uh... Yeah, again, I would, I would ask that first question. It's like, why are you deleting it? What, what are you doing that you need to delete that? Uh, you know, generally, you know, was it truly deleted? Um, that you can go in and delete it. This was like some of the, the, we've talked about this a number of times. This is our, by the way, this is our 14th week of doing this. Sounds about right. And uh, 14th episode and uh, part two of the 14th episode. So the 28th time we've done <laughs> yeah um i'm just doing you know resume stuffing there uh, yeah we, so we've talked about this a number of times is uh, you know that some of the first questions people were asking when teams launched 
three and a half years ago uh, was, you know, well, how do I archive? He's like, well, what do you mean by archive? What do you what are you actually talking about? Um, and what is that that process? So when when it was deleted, was it truly deleted, or was it that all users' access was uh, was turned off? You know, they were removed. The admin did it to make it fall out of everyone's navigation, yet all of the assets, all of the conversation history, the discussions, the exchange assets, as well as the SharePoint assets are still archived and they're just asleep, hidden from that world. But all of that content, all of the artifacts created are all searchable. If you delete it, you're, you're, you're talking about that structural integrity. You're removing all the conversations, all of the links to it. So there will be broken links to content that were mentioned in other teams, other conversations, like there's there's crossover in between all those different components, broken links within email. Um, there could be dead links via search and discovery inside of, of SharePoint because- Security of abnormalities as users are removed. Right. Uh, all sorts of things. So you can delete, uh, it should be rare that you delete, but yeah. OCD is a bad problem to have if you're an admin. <laughs> uh, let's see, I've got uh, two other questions. Anything else, any, any other interesting things come up over the course of the day? Not particularly. Nothing here except we've got this 50,000 acre weenie roast northeast of town. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cold. oh, yeah, that's it's right. right. Fire. Yeah. In the, it, in the mountains. And basically, it's pretty simple. What you do is you get your, you, you, you get in the car and you drive out with a bunch of weenies and some really long forks and you you sort of park yourself at the mountain foothills and sit away a little while. The fire will be, fire will be by presently. Where Where is the <laughs> center of the fire, Hal? What city is it closest to? Tucson. It's the Mount Catalina Mountains. They're just, just to the north of the northeast of the city. Mm. The, in fact, it basically forms the entire northern edge of the city. Yeah. The fire originally started in the you know, west, western tip of the range called, uh, called Push Ridge and has just been migrating itself east ever since. I, uh, there are, there's a half a dozen webcams. Um, and the, uh, the, there's a uh, basically wireless uh, internet and phone provider also ISP here in town called Simply Bits. And uh, they've got uh, a bunch of webcams up there because they, they provide most of the internet service up there to virtually everybody in the world that's got a communication site is either on Mount Lemon, the highest peak in the range, or the second highest, Mount Bigelow. That's where all the television stuff is. Yeah. All the two-ray radio, though, that's, that's police, fire, highway patrol, government stuff. There are just tons of radio installations up there, and that's on a place called Radio Ridge. And I, one of the one of the cameras, in fact, two of the cameras that are parked up there, they're on 24 hours a day. They update every 30 seconds. Um, and I got to watch the fire just completely ravage that ridge last night. Wow, it's uh, it's messy. Fire is amazing. Yeah, well, it's just the wrong time of year, unfortunately. Arizona at this time of the year is, 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 is 100 to 110 degrees. The humidity is roughly between 5 and 10 percent, which means it's dry. Yeah. And uh, the culprit in this one was a little old dry thunderstorm. It, it, it dumped a whole bunch of verga, which is water that never gets to ground, and a couple of two or three lightning bolts. And then one of those two or three managed to hit the ground out there and start a fire and we've got this lovely fuel it's called buffalo grass it's i believe a uh, plant that's native to africa that was brought here for i don't know what reason but this stuff is invasive it grounds out uh, a lot of the indigenous desert vegetation and it has the nasty habit of burning 
like a blowtorch. Yeah, and it's dry. So, <laughs> what? Hey, Hal, do you know what direction is the smoke flowing? Uh, it's mostly from what I've been seeing. It's mostly been flowing north to northeast. Yeah, I just I, I, I just have the memory now of uh, the fires on the west coast, Northern California. Like it covered. It looked like. Uh, Salt Lake looked like Los Angeles in its worst smog day. It was awful and for weeks. Um, So that was my first thought, not to be selfish or anything, but, (laughs) you know, uh, you say north and I kind of like. Yeah, Yeah. well, for those that don't know, Utah is north of Arizona. Get a map. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, uh, I'll get another question here. Um, let's see, Richard says, so we deployed Teams to our user base some two years back, more recently enabling call and collaboration features as we slowly move to decommissioning Skype for Business. With more use of the Teams app, we are having a growing number of users state that their Windows Teams app is hanging or crashing during screen shares, video conferences, or opening files with the app. We have raised with Microsoft, sending them gigabytes of logs with affected devices. Um, however, three weeks on, they aren't offering much in terms of a reason or fix. We've updated firmware, drivers, cleared Teams cache, disabled hardware acceleration to name a few, but still the issue persists on random devices with no viable trends. Anyone else experiencing this? Well, my first thought is what organizational policies do you have around network traffic? What's allowed? Um, You know, if you're the only one who's seeing this, it's, you know, systemically, there are not Teams problems right now that I'm aware of. Um, You know, we're using Teams just fine right now. Everyone else is, you know, anecdotally, The evidence says, you know, we're fine. I've not seen anything in the admin center recently, but if your organization is experiencing these issues and you've tried remedying them on the local uh, client side, I would turn to your network resources and firewalls and other network devices that you happen to have and look at what they contribute to the problem or potentially to the problem. Um, Do you have proper ports opened. Um, We were talking about this this morning as well. Um, You know, layer seven inspection, application level inspection, uh, looking at packets. Uh, Different devices do it differently. There's no one simple answer to everything, but Microsoft does have guidance um, regarding ports and whatnot. I'll see if I can find that. Yeah, this is the bread and butter of the traditional IT organization to go and root these kinds of things out. I, my response was much the same. as like the first place you go and you look at, well, what's happening on Microsoft's network? Is there anything else? And, and it sounds like, you know, Richards and his team, they're, they're doing that. Then he's asking, hey, has anybody else experienced this? We're, we're running through the different scenarios. We're trying to root this out. Um, but that's, that's usually... Um, this is like the the only answer to start going and testing those components. Uh, let me open There's that an, up. Another lovable link there. <laughs> yep. Let me copy that. I'll share that. What is what's the link? Uh, it's to docs.microsoft.com, uh, specifically under Microsoft Teams, and that uh, there is a rather lengthy. Um, anchor which has a bunch of different stuff in it that I'm not going to attempt to describe but it's uh, simply put it's in the uh, Microsoft Teams reference on docs.microsoft.com if you go down to cloud voice uh, there's a reference section and it's within that reference section
this particular one is called Microsoft Teams Calls Flows, Team Call Flows. And it talks about the different ports that are involved as well as the protocols. Um, you know, whether you're using TCP or UDP, um, different ports that you want to have open, um, or if you're restricting patterns, uh, you know, whether it's set up a send receive or just broadcast type um, filters on firewalls, if you're doing that, those sorts of things. I know people get particular, but then that Again, that comes down to the particular firewall. Yep. And then, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically you just got to have to go through and just start testing those things, checking those one by one. And um, you usually you get to know a lot about your network. And you probably find some of the ugly things you never wanted to know about your network as well. Yeah. Well, thank you for that link there. Um, so I've added that into uh, the both of the live streams. Hal has now moved to the airport. <laughs> Came here in space musician museum. <laughs> Busy bit of ground space there. Are, are you able, like, I've never, I've always wanted to visit one of those places. Are you able to go and, and walk around, or is it guided tour stuff, or? You can go and walk around, get inside stuff. Really? All, all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, it's a it's a wonderful place. Very cool. Will they look at me strange if I've got that five-gallon uh, canister of gasoline, and I try to fuel <laughs> something up and uh, wire it. see if it'll turn over? <laughs> Well, I don't know. They've got an SR-71 out there, and to the best of my knowledge, that takes JP-1. Make sure you bring a car battery, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's uh, uh, yeah. You know, I've got my travel battery. I can recharge my uh, iPhone 10. Uh, nine and a half times, I think, full charges off that thing. Um, oh. So I can recharge my Surface Pro, I think, twice. Wow. Um, oh, that's neat. So I could you know, maybe rig that to jump it, you know, with that. Potentially. So I'm just saying. Just, just saying, yeah. Yeah. Just speculating here. Yeah. I just figure that I could go, can I, can I part something out? There? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Well, no, if you want to do parting out, uh, there's a, a couple shots to the left of this in my in, in my uh, pictures folder. There's a couple of shots of the Davis Month and Boneyard. There's lots of stuff to be picked and choosed out there. Acres and acres and acres of B-52s and, uh, and F-16s and no, all sorts of stuff. I would love to go and explore. Not, I, you know... Not in the middle of summer, like this time of year. No, I'd wait till fall down in your neck of the woods to go visit a place like that. But oh, the other thing I was going to say is that I'm I'm fairly certain that a requirement to work at a place like that, you have to look pretty much like Tom Waits. <laughs> That's probably true. Oh, I doubt that, but you never know. Yeah, like if you're in, you know, or into like they they're probably like. Uh, there's the three categories. You have the eccentric inventor, Tom Waits looking person that works there. Um, the security ex military type. Um, and then you have the steampunk nerds that are, <laughs> I think one of those three, I think would it's just the way I envision it. Just watched a movie with uh, Tom Waits in it the other day. Pretty good one. Which one? Um, I knew you were going to ask that. I'd have got to go look at my Plex server. So, I mean, I, I I can't look at him now. I know he's in a few others, but I just think of him in, in Mystery Men these days, yeah. Yeah. In this the movie, mad, mad scientists, which, you know, are much less desirable than regular scientists, but... <laughs> 
Well, he uh, in this movie, he played uh, an interesting fellow with uh, mental issues. Same with Mystery Men. Hence the mad scientist. All right. Yeah, you'd need that. That that's a large lot. You'd need to have some kind of vehicle to get around. I really want to go to a place that that would be just fantastic. To can I like camp out with the family, like in between them, like out in the plateau and and uh, well, it is on an Air Force base. That might might be an issue. Oh yeah. I don't know. Uh, Depends on your Air Force credentials. I mean. Well, there you go. I'll just I'll just bring those with me. Yep. Yeah. And so I've got one last question here from the ones that I kind of uh, so asked over the last couple of days. Um, and uh, who's that? Oh. Uh, Neil sick. Oh, Neil's out. Oh, bummer. Sorry to hear that, Neil. Hope you feel better. Yeah. yeah. Those, those virtual germs. We don't want those. That's smart. That's that's good. He's he's looking out for us. That's good. Um, all right. So Kellum says, uh, what to use when you need more than teams and live events? Oh, hey, this kind of goes. We started talking about this this morning. Somebody had asked the question, asked me uh, about restream. Like, how are you you're like live streaming teams? using Restream, like how does that all work? Um, I'll read the rest of his question. It says, well, what to use when you need more than Teams live events? I've been asked about platform for a glitzy online events with features like multiple tracks, human interpreters on multiple audio streams, virtual birds of a feather breakout. Uh, I see Microsoft use On24 for some of their uh, live events and looked at iVent and WebEx, anyone with more suggestions. So. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you that there's a uh, there's a few discussion threads that are going around. Um, so I'll, I'll start out by saying that uh, plug for Teams. Microsoft is specific. And we've talked about this in previous episodes. Um, Microsoft is adding uh, quite a few items to their roadmap to enable uh, events that you know where. You know, Teams was designed as an enterprise collaboration platform, uh, you know, obviously, but with more and more education se education sector needs were during uh, the, the COVID period of quarantine, more and more live events that they realized the shortcomings of enterprise collaboration platform for these these events. So they're adding some of these different features like look, I, for webinars, for example, I use uh, Zoom. I'm a paid Zoom user, so I don't have the problems that people have with the with the free. But it's because it's really inexpensive for small webinars that are 100 to 500 people. Um, it just works. It, you go in there, and uh, one of the key features is that when you uh, provision a new webinar, of course, it creates the landing page, the registration page. It has uh, you know, the polling and chat and Q&A modules and kind of all those components, which Teams has some of those things, not all of those things. Um, the uh, so so that's something that Microsoft is is working on. Um, we're talking about uh, well, so to enable this scenario to help answer that half of it. So I use uh, a flavor of OBS. So it's the open broadcast software. So it's open source, basically television studio software. Um, I use the, um, what is it? The uh, Streamlabs OBS. So the Streamlabs flavor of OBS, um, where they've gone and fixed some of the quirks. Um, it, uh, for me, uh, so I have in my second mon my primary monitor. This is my secondary monitor. I ha I'm basically sharing the monitor. So as I showed earlier, I can drag and drop things in and and showcase it there. Um, and I just have a very simple setup inside of OBS where I am, uh, you know, capturing everything that's happening within this monitor, which allows me to use my camera. I've got a virtual camera that's taking the snapshot, my camera pulling my face into this. Uh, and then I have 
uh, it pointing to restream.io, and that's what actually goes and broadcasts that out. Um, so you can have, uh, you'll be, be running uh, multiple sessions um, via OBS or multiple cameras in a session uh, and fade in and out, have all of your screens, have all of the, the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the names and, and Twitter handles and the lower thirds and different effects going on and music and light changes and, and all that kind of stuff. And I actually use this Elgato stream deck. I'll hold it up here. If you want to get fancy. So this, this device here, um, where I have it, um, set up with, you can have it each of the different screens. So if I want to do something where I move this primary screen over to the side and split the screen and share a slide by still have our faces, there's just a lot of magic that you can do there. Um, but just out of the box Teams capability, obviously Teams Live does not stream to uh, the, the social channels. Uh, with Restream, it'll allow you to actually push it out and simultaneously broadcast to multiple channels. So to Facebook, to um, to LinkedIn, to Twitter, to a bunch of different locations. So yeah, we, we talked yeah. about this morning a little bit about uh, coming features and how breakout rooms are coming in uh, yep. Q4 of this year. So uh, to further support the the notion of you know the conference style access and um, people doing conferency type things. Um, we're getting some of those features added. Yep. Yeah, that was something that we talked. Yeah, you're right. It was a, it's a missing aspect. It's, it's a gaping hole in most live events is uh, they're the, the online events are just really bad at bringing people together to collaborate around there. So you can't go into an expo hall and go look through the vendor booths. Right. I can't go find a group of people uh, from my user group. This is something, whether we go to, you know, inspire or ignite or build or whatever it is, one of the things that we do is here, our user group in Utah, we always, you know, come together, find each other, who's going to this event and then try to get, have lunch or, or to uh, just talk about, you know, what are our takeaways there at the event? And uh, you, you can't do that during the event either. So, um, yeah, the idea of having these rooms, these dedicated spaces that you can have a you know sidebar, the, the content is going, the sessions are happening live, uh, but maybe we want to go and have a talk about SharePoint migration and anybody that's interested in talking about um, you know a session that we just watched with uh, the Microsoft's latest, talking about their latest APIs, the migration APIs, changes to that. Let's go have a sidebar conversation there. Um, so they're trying to provide that that feature, which will be- Doesn't get us all the way there, but it gets us further along than we are right now. I still like there was a, a, a vendor solution. I apologize, I don't know the name of it. Uh, maybe somebody out there uh, is aware of this. But they created where it actually had like a visualization of an expo hall. It had tables. Hmm. And so you could have vendors at a table. You could have topics assigned to a table. And then it limited the number of seats. And you could actually see, okay, that I want to be in that discussion. It's full. Oh, somebody just left. I can now grab that spot. Uh, and then go into that virtual space and be able to have that conversation with a limited number of people. I think they had like eight or 12 at the most so that it's a you know few enough people that could actually have a dialogue and not run over each other like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think there's a, there's a, it, it, I, I think we're going to see, um, uh, we're going to see a number of other tools that will come out of this this COVID period where I think we're all having the same, we're identifying the same gaps. So I think there's going to be multiple solutions for the Microsoft ecosystem from the competitive solutions um, looking at shoring up this this need. Yeah, it certainly bumps, uh, bumps up the priority on some products and features of products uh, that we've been waiting for. 
Yeah, uh, I'm just seeing Liam is on chatting again. He's uh, he doesn't want to join the discussion. Come on, he's happy, Liam. He's happy to join yeah, really. the Facebook live stream and comment on there. We want to see you here, Liam. Yeah, and there and Joel as well. And Joel's got the invite. He has the past, you know. So uh, uh, anyway, yeah, he Liam is saying he said he has the Elgato Stream Deck, the Elgato Lights. What's the advantage of the Elgato Lights? Liam, is it just lights that are fancy? You paid more. I want to you see my name in Elgato the... lights. Yeah, you got the. Uh, that's right. <laughs> you never hear that phrase. I want to see my name up in Elgato lights. Like, yeah. no, never hear that. Um, <laughs> and then he also has the 4K Pro capture card. I saw that with your your purchase, Liam, when you were sharing that out. So I'm envious of that one. There's a couple of them. They're both expensive. One's more expensive than the other. <laughs> But yeah, that was uh, very envious of uh, of that aspect of your purchase, Liam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you definitely did it right, Liam. Yeah. So, because well, you know, Liam is a big uh, is a big gamer, so he's got to oh yeah stream, stream all his gaming, hardcore gaming. He's got to keep his kids in line. Yeah, I think he's. I'm pretty sure Liam is like a golf pro HD gamer. So I think that's what his. I have no idea. I'm just making. I think he's clammed up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see. Any new questions? I don't see any other questions here. I don't have anything else lined up. We got another 11 minutes. What else should we talk about? Hmm. What do you guys got going on this week? Anything exciting? Work more working from home. <laughs> more of the same. Yeah. Uh, um hey i've got a question are either of you guys planning to go and do any in-person events this year do you have anything planned tentatively um i know that rackley is very intent on holding uh, the north american collaboration summit yeah down in branson that's in is that september yeah uh, towards the end of September. And even though, you know, we're in an uncertain state right now, that is one place and one event where if you've ever been to Branson and seen the convention center, you know that it's possible for people to socially distance there. And so attendees of the Branson event, I'm sure can remain socially distant. Now, of course, flights going there and coming back, different story. That's another thing. But, you know, I drive down, so. Yeah. Well, my wife just got back from, uh, she spent a week in Minneapolis. And I think most of the, uh, you know, obviously the, the I think she had gloves and the mask the entire time in the, the airport and they require the masks on the airplane. But um, it was actually a really nice little feature is all the middle seats are, uh closed off so nice you, know, it, you don't have somebody squished up next to you um so that that sounds nice <laughs> yeah no man spreading yeah i'll be doing that same flight out one way i'm gonna be drive driving my daughter and son-in-law back uh to utah um so driving with them and then uh her father-in-law driving them back out so uh, i'll get to experience that'll be my first flight since the beginning of february so what about you, Christian? You got any plans to uh, attend in person anywhere? Yeah, so I I have, um, I'm right now I'm on the schedule for events in October and November. And uh, yeah, I, I, I need to verify. I think October over in Germany may conflict with the wedding. So mm -hmm. um, I have to, I have to figure that out. Um, I know the SharePoint Fest just, uh, adjusted their seattle dates to october are they in october now yeah i believe they are they sent out that notice and then they're in dallas they it looks like they've departed chicago and they're in um dallas in december hmm. yeah i got the notice to uh submit for uh oh. the latter one 
Oh, right. by the way, uh, Liam t- defends himself. He's like, he's actually driving between uh, Utah and Mississippi, so he has an excuse for not joining. So That's a bit of a long haul, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and Joel says it's uh, Slovenia Thrive, um, and, uh, and then there's um, M365 Saturday, both in October. Yeah, I think we're going to see... Um, yeah, as it, Joel says, I think October will be a very big experiment with with events. I know yeah. that they're. I think that the first one that I'm, you know, that that I think I know people are actually planning on is is the North American Collaboration Summit is Rackley's event in Branson. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Liam's driving thirty hours. He's bragging, thirty hours. More yeah. power to him. I mean, I'll do the 10 hours down, 10, 10 to 12 hours, you know, down to uh, Branson. But 30 hours in the car these days, I don't yeah. think I could hack that. Yeah, I'm, well, uh, driving back from Minnesota to Salt Lake, 19 hours. So I'm looking forward to that. We're going to stop off at uh, Mount Rushmore, which is one of my favorite landmarks. So oh, I'm cool. excited to go see that. Never been there. Yeah. It's, Hope to get it's there pretty, someday. The Black Hills are are amazing. Uh, it's just so beautiful uh, in that area. Um, and then you have to. No offense to anybody that might be watching uh, live or the recording who lives in Southern Wyoming, but man, Southern Wyoming sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, miles and miles are the same thing over and yeah, over. Yeah, there's huh? going to be like you know nine, ten hours of nothing, just nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and Joel says, "Go see Crazy Horse." Yeah, I want to see the progress. I want to see how long. I, so I've been, to, I've been a couple times to Rushmore, and the Crazy Horse. It's you know Chief Crazy Horse on the horse, you know, with his hand out, you know, doing the point. It's very cool. Um, so I think I, last time, time I was there, his hand, you can see his arm, but the rock all still beneath it, and you could start to see the horse's head, and you can see his face, and. Yeah, so I'm excited to see the uh, progress uh, made there as well. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, and then the in November is the uh, European SharePoint 0365 and Azure conference in Amsterdam. So uh, I'd hate to miss that one because that's I've been every single year, or every 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 time. It's not been every year, but uh, that's all you. Yeah. I still haven't been overseas. I haven't been overseas for quite some time. And Joel, um, Devil's Tower is not in southern Wyoming. It's up up north. It's up at the uh, the border there. Um, yeah, I've been there as well. Um, so that's the wrong direction. We won't be going there um, otherwise because I thought of that. Uh, don't want to attack another, uh, be about three hours onto the drive to, to go see Devil's Tower. So mm-hmm. not going to do that. The but, spaceship uh, can pick you up somewhere else. Yes. Yes. Anybody, if you've not seen you know, the classic Devil's Tower is the uh, the, the mountain uh, from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It, it is exactly what it looks like. That's a real mountain. It was not CGI. It was not a model. Uh, it's really cool. You get out and hiking around it. I mean, it, it, and, and when we were there, there were climbers that were up, going up the crevices. It's just... Uh, and it was the, uh, I guess it was a, uh, a smokestack. It was the volcano. It just kind of pushed it up and everything else eroded away from it. So it stands out from you know, around it. There's, It's not like there's a row of these mountains looking like that. It's very unique and That's otherworldly. Cool. It's, a, it's a unique location. Very cool. So, so. Oh, wait. Liam's not driving right now. That starts next Monday. So he has zero. He's just he's working hard. That's a weak excuse. Hardly working. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. You're not fooling anyone, Liam. Yeah. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I, I know, let me see uh, one last pass. See if there's any other new questions that came in. I don't see anything. Nothing else. We'll uh, I think we'll close out this. Uh, this round we will be back next monday uh we'll figure out what's going on with the other uh 
simultaneous uh, live stream to the other services. It wasn't turning on again. Um, work sometimes. Why it didn't tonight, this morning, no idea. Uh, Just updated my Plex server. So you've got oh. the latest bits when you go out there. Yeah, I'll have to go take a look. With a well, boatload of movies that I threw out there. Well, thank you so much for, for joining. And uh, we'll be back next week. So again, we're at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific every Monday, except for the 27th of July when I'll be out on a lake. Every Monday, except the Mondays, Christian doesn't show up. Correct. <laughs> Feel free to live stream it to do it, gentlemen. Come on. Uh, uh, well, we'll see what it can do. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Probably and not, just... but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely consider doing it for five minutes and then. It's a decide. possibility. Yeah, yeah. It's not How would you be up for that if Christian... Uh... Pass the buck. Okay, you, well. You can always, guys can always always collect it, not live stream it, just record it, and then we'll just publish the recording. I'll be back Tuesday, okay. late Monday night. So there's always that option as well. And we'd always just capture it and uh, put, promote the uh, the recording. Sure. So, But that's yeah. weeks away. That's a month away. We'll do something. We'll be back Monday. Thanks, everybody, for watching on the live stream, all five of you. <laughs> yeah thanks uh, mom how's it in the afterlife <laughs> <laughs> that's right all right john we'll talk enjoy to you enjoy your week all right see you later bye take care thanks christian thanks john <laughs>